Hey folks, Jonathan here. Alright, I sure made a mess here. This is where I had the engine set up in the boiler. Then moved all of it. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, working on the Bates engine. Uh, figured out how to time it. And I'm just making some parts, uh, as you can see. And I've got uh, six more of them to make. It's missing seven. I had one. So, uh, we're slowly getting this thing. And let me see, I got my ring in. I was I had one broke ring that I broke personally myself getting unstuck. Uh, so I've got it. It's got two rings. They're 14 inch bore, three quarter inch wide, and 310 thousandths depth. So that's done. I've got a new rod that I bought. It's a uh, buddy of mine's because his lathe will chuck 14 inches. It'll chuck that uh, piston. We're having to mill it out or machine out the center. We're going to sweat fit it and pin it. Before that, we're going to thread it and uh, get it ready to, to put on. It's a chrome plated rod, like a hydraulic cylinder rod. So, All right, let me show you what I've gotten done here. Okay, so here's the concrete I poured uh, the other day, uh, the day before I went to Denton. So I guess that was this past Wednesday. And boiler is set up. Got my little engine there. I've got my uh, knife sharpener, uh, whetstone, what do you want to call it? Uh, my red engine here that I hadn't decided for sure you know what I'm going to do orientation wise with that but I do have it piped in so what I've done uh, I've cut out a plate to put there so the ash wouldn't get on the bottom on the concrete uh, I plumbed of course I went up through the roof with that I just done that this morning so I gotta finish everything up but I plumbed all the piping in that's for that engine and then this runs down above the door and runs down to this engine like I said this is going to be running this I've got it sitting on a pan I don't like that pan I'm going to change the pan out but we're going to we are going to set them on pans and run the exhaust out uh, just pick up another little boiler door this is for a hot water heater for a cold cold hot water heater a little tiny one and uh, cleaned up a few things on the uh, uh, boiler went ahead and just painted it uh, you know just to preserve it and cleaned up things a little bit not a lot but we changed out the gauge I tested that gauge to make sure it was right and you know we're only running 85 psi so this is a really good good working gauge uh, we had one that I wanted to use for it that wasn't right it was reading too high so uh, put a pipe in here I'm going to change it out later for the blow off I think I'm going to we're, we're going to go up with it uh, but I did go ahead and plumb that in. We've got our whistle up there with a chain on it. And got it set up decent. So we went ahead and run the pipe around the corner. And ran it to the Payne engine. Which is uh, Payne and Sons. Which is the Henry Ford Museum engine. And we are actually going to try to run this thing on steam today. And I don't know how it will run only having a 3 quarter inch line. Uh, with that little boiler, but you know, we, if we can turn it slow, that's fine. I think this engine will run slow. I really do. I think, you know, just to adjust it back. Now, I've got a valve here, but I didn't want it to depend on that big valve, so I actually put a small valve here and a three quarter. So everything's piped in. And oh, also concrete under our uh, Buffalo Forge engine, six inches thick, so we're good to go with it. I'm going to mount it down and go ahead and continue work on it I uh, did get one end of the boiler done I've got to do the other end yet well not completely done but I mean it's it's just about done so we've got it closed up so we've got to do the other side and uh, everything's looking good with that we also done the concrete I've got this boiler moved here and I've uh, done the concrete for it now it's only five by seven but I've got to build a wall and that becomes our ash pit really and then uh, inside four foot wide we've got to go with our herringbone grates and get all them set up and then this thing's gonna to have to be brought over and sit down on top so that's what we'll be working on here soon but the concrete's poured for it that's the important part I don't have that engine mounted down so we're probably not gonna be running this at all today I've got to make a belt for it too uh, but we're gonna go ahead and fire and at least try to run our paint engine I've got some work to do to it a little bit while we're while it's getting uh, the steam's getting heated up but 
Uh, I like this engine a lot. Uh, you know, I I don't know what you would say. I rigged this. Probably the best word for it, but I rigged this up. Uh, this valve gear and this eccentric uh, strap, and I've got it shimmed and I had to machine it and all that stuff. So to make this run. Now I did not know this was the Henry Ford Museum engine when I made that, but I, in the pictures it's missing also when it was in the museum. And all the parts that was on it was still on it when I've got it. Exactly like it was in the museum. So got to clean it back up a little bit. It's got a little dusty and dirty where I've been sawing wood and well not sawing wood but cutting wood to do on the buildings here. And uh, so we will probably go back and make this a whole lot nicer. Uh, to make it you know look more fitting for the engine. I just done that to try to Get it to work and uh, it did work. So all right, let's get it fired up All right folks coming on up Moving up slow, but it's moving up Woods not quite as dry as it was before I was using a uh, scrap wood now. I'm just using some wood. I cut so uh I think we're good to go with this. I have oiled everything. I've got oilers on it, drip oilers. I got them adjusted. Uh, checked the bearings, tightened them up, put some lock nuts on them that needed on them. They double nutted everything uh, to keep them from backing out. Uh, added some. Uh, let me see. Some drains. I happen to have some drains finally that would fit. We gotta drain the top and bottom cylinder before we start it and make sure there's no water on it. We don't want it to prime and blow the head off the end of it. And uh, that can happen. So, I think we're good to go. Uh, we're gonna let that pressure build up and then we're gonna give this thing a try. Alright? I'm sure water and I don't know why. We've ran all the engines for about 50 psi, a little over 50. Water level is great, and everything's looking good. So I think we're going to fire this engine back up again and see what we can do. Let me see.
Okay, we are going to shut it down here, and I'm going to try one more time to uh, tighten up that gland a little bit. It's leaking pretty bad. But, uh, you know, it, it's not going to run because they don't have a governor. Okay, this is a high-speed engine. You really want to keep an even amount of steam going to it, and I can't do that because uh, my boiler is not enough to run this engine at a high speed. So, someone would have to be sort of watching the, uh, the valve on it, making sure that it, when it slowed down, that you just speed it back up just a little bit. Otherwise, we got some, we got a little rod noise that needs to be worked on, and we've got our packing, and, uh, Besides that, not bad. I think we can work with it. Do a little more work to it. You know, they, they run better the more you run them. Like I said, this thing possibly, not probably, but possibly uh, Edison might have been the last one to run this one. So who knows? Uh, it did come in handy for a museum. It was sold with a Edison generator. So I don't know if I'm going to keep this eccentric strap that I machined for it or not. You know, we might find a better one or a different one. But for now, that's what we're going to leave on it. All right, I'm going to stoke the boulder up a little bit and get some water back in this thing. See if we can uh, run some of these other engines.
Alright, so we're running both of them. Uh, it'll slowly bleed down. You really can't handle them both. Not a big enough puller, but you shut this one off. Let me open the valve a little bit on this one. Alright. So, I think the main thing on this one. Cut back here. Okay, our noise, I believe, is in our valve. Pretty sure that's the noise I'm hearing. I gotta take that back apart, and we may never get that out of it. But we've got a bad leak on that packing on the rod that we're gonna have to work on. I mean, it's not terrible. I mean, I don't know how the sound turns out on the camera. I won't know until I edit. Sometimes the sounds are much worse. Sometimes they're not nearly as bad. But I know our leak's bad. My oiler was hitting the governor, too, so I gotta get a smaller oiler on it. So I just pull them down the hole, the hole of it now. Um, I think we're good. Now, I put steam oil in this thing. I actually put it into this hole. So we got plenty of steam oil in it. This cylinder's lubed up good. Uh, like I said, I've got some hydrostatic lubricators and some mechanical lubricators. I'm hoping i got some hydrostatic coming, but I've got some mechanical here. Probably the first time on steam in a lot of years. So. You got them, you just better run them, right? Alright, let me get to work on some water here. Trying to get a load of that engine like to use a lot of water for some reason. All right. Seemed to do really good. Uh, ran it quite a bit. And, uh, you know, it's, it's more than what this boiler here wants to do. But, I mean, I can run it at a slow RPM. And we was just uh, playing anyway, so checking things out. I like the little boiler. It's really, really nice. We got our water level good for the next time. So when we fired it, it'll expand back. Uh, our new gauge worked really well. I did run it up in a, to 85 for the blow off. I, I like to do that usually at least once. Uh, just to uh, make sure this working correctly. And I can see the gauge a lot better. So we're going to, I didn't get to run this at all. Uh, I haven't made the belt yet, but change out put a smaller pan and then drill through it and mount it uh, this engine is going to move if I don't mount it down so it's going to be permanent there anyway I appreciate everybody and I appreciate all the good comments on uh, the people that do enjoy watching the steam stuff uh, I'm getting ready to do some more automotive stuff uh, just some stuff that I want to do my L car I'm going to go ahead and change the radiator out in it and drive it, you know, some. I've been back driving my uh, 51 Studebaker. Uh, it's good on fuel, and I just enjoy driving it, so that's what I've been driving. And, like I said, working on all this, so I'll try to do some updates as I go on some of the same stuff. Uh, I wasn't going to, but, you know, I I'd like to. So, uh, so I'll probably do some more on the steam, uh, getting ready, like I said, to build the, uh, the, it's not the firebox, it's sort of the ash pit, and then it has the herringbone grates on top of that, and then the boiler goes on top of that, and I'm going to get that done for that big boiler. Uh, we're continuing to work on the cordless. I've got a mess here, I've got to get cleaned up, but, uh, we'll continue to work on it. And I uh, want to get it running this year, and like I said, the one out back. So this has worked out really well. Uh, there's one more engine I'm going to run off this one, which I've ran before. It's the the uh, Bookwalter engine. I'm going to run, I've actually got a T up there. We're going to run an overhead pipe over to it so we can run it. And uh, I actually ran this engine in the red or the green one there for quite a while together and the, the boiler I can keep up with that no problem so the little boiler uh, this will be our, our go-to for you know just uh, playing around just because 
it don't take nearly as much to fire something like this as what it would to, to fire the big one. Anyway, all right, we're going to be on that boiler here very soon. And because I'm still waiting on, since I'm waiting on parts for the cordless, uh, waiting on getting the rod and the piston done and all that, uh, besides making the parts, I can't do a lot on it, but making the ends for the uh, linkage. So I think what we're going to do is see if we can get this boiler here together and fire it and see how it does. Uh, got to make the other end for it. Uh, got to take all the pipes off, seal everything, fix it, put it back. I got to get some gauges on it. Uh, I've got one pipe I'm going to run over. I want to get uh, the whistle that came from Gene on it that my grandson was wanting to, to blow. It's the one that he gave him. And we're going to just go ahead and get this engine, I guess, by itself hooked up. Uh, still debating on whether maybe to tee into this one. And I can run it on either one just by which valve we open. Uh, that's the good thing about steam is, you, you know, you got a lot of options you can do. But uh, I really want to get to work on this and see if I can figure out how this works and learn the... the uh, not the basics but I guess they learn all about the uh, eight pole DC generator how it works how it's wired uh, I think if I go through it I can you know learn it and enjoy learning stuff like this so we'll see how that goes I've got to drill and mount it bolt it down and we'll go from there but I appreciate everybody watching and like I said just you know if you want to watch watch if you don't I totally understand just don't come to a video that says steam engine and then complain because there's not a car there appreciate everybody watching till next time bye